So I thought we'd do a quick tutorial about how to make leather trim in ZBrush. Uh, the likes of this that you'd put around any piece of geometry uh, that you might want. So we can do a couple of examples at the end of this, but basically this is the final result that we're going for. And we're going to make this in a nice easy brush that you can apply to any shape. So to start off with, I've created this. This is the, the basis for this. And this is the object that we're going to tile again and again all the way around the side uh, of the brush. So we're going to use a simple brush to do that. I'm going to hold down Control and Shift so you can see each of these objects um, in their own right. It's a very, very simple piece of geometry. Um, I'll bring everything back. This is the center stitch. This is the stitch on one side and the stitch on the other side. So basically those two kind of overlap. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's pretty much what we have. I want the surface that we're going to be aligning this to to be on this side. So basically all I have to make sure really is that this side here, the bottom, these vertices are exact mirrors of these vertices. And then that way they'll stitch together and everything will work fine. So having done that, we're now ready to actually create the brush that's going to uh, do the, the magic for us. Uh, so I'll press Shift F so we can see what we're looking at here. Uh, and it's very important when you're creating brushes like this that you align it correctly. If you align your brush like this, when you go to create your brush, ZBrush is going to think that this is the axis you want to use. So I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to snap this to this view. Um, you can do that also using this guy up here. But now that I've, I've got that to one view, I can go to Brush and I can go down to Create and say Create an Insert Mesh Brush. When I do that, it's going to ask, do you want to create a new brush or not? Now, whichever brush you currently had selected, um, it's going to leave that here. But we just want to say, yes, we want to create a new brush. So I'll create a new one here and it's given it the name um, of the subtool that we had in here, which was left. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this to the other side and press shift as we approach uh, the rotation that we like. And I'm going to rename this to right. And I'm going to go back to my brush menu and I'm going to say create an insert mesh again. And now it's going to ask me, do I want a new brush or do I want to append it? So I'm going to say append in this instance. So the reason I'm doing a left and a right version of this is because it depends on which version or it depends on the uh, object you're putting on, whether you want it on the top or the bottom or the left or the right. So with that done, we're now ready with our brush. But if we go to a new object, I'm just going to take a sphere here and make it a poly mesh 3D. If I try and draw this out, all we're doing is basically just drawing this mesh out. So we need to make it into a curve brush. So we do that by going to the stroke menu and then turning on curve mode. Now immediately this brush becomes a curve. Uh, the size of your brush will determine uh, how big this is, but you can see that while this is working, it's not stitching them together. So we do that from the brush menu. If your interface is closed like this, all you have to do is double click on this divider here and then once you've done that, go to the brush menu and you can just drag that and dock it over here. So we want to modify this. So we go to the brush modifiers roll up and in here we have several settings that we want to change. So I'm going to turn off tri parts. That's for a different kind of brush. I am going to turn on weld points because I want this to weld. And you'll see the next time I click on this, it's now welded those points together. And I'm going to increase the curve resolution a little bit and the max bend angle, which will basically allow me to get more of an angle on this should I need to. Uh, without that, this would, wouldn't bend quite as much. So with that done, you'll see that I had the right selected. If I choose the left, all of these get reset, um, which is unfortunate. So you have to turn that off, turn that back on, set this back up again, change your curve angle. The last thing I'm going to do is sometimes in ZBrush, um, if you don't have stretch turned on when you do this, you get some uh, kind of strange results. So I'm going to turn that on uh, for both left and for right uh, and I'll leave it like that. So this brush now to my mind is, is ready to go. So let's use it. So I'm going to go to, uh, I'm actually going to control shift and select my sphere. Uh, I'll go to my stroke menu and I will functions. I'll delete that curve uh, and I'll also delete hidden from modify geometry, modify topology, delete hidden just to hide that curve that I had drawn out on that and I'll get rid of the mask. So let's say we want to create a new piece of geometry here and we want it to make, to make it look like a shoulder pad or something like that. So I have my brush is ready to go. Uh, I'm going to hold down control and shift and change my selection brush to something like a slice curve. And with the slice curve, if you hold down control and shift, you can draw out a line 
If you press Alt, it will start bending that curve and Alt again will bend it again. So we can start making interesting shapes. We can even hold down Shift and reposition this to a place that we find to wherever we want to have it. So when I let go, it's now going to slice that curve and create a perfect clean line all the way through my mesh. So we can hold control and shift and this time just click on one polygroup, the one that we, we want to keep. Uh, and that will delete the other one or hide the other one rather, but we still need to go to modify topology and delete hidden. So once that's done, we're ready to go. Personally, I don't like these triangles everywhere. I want a cleaner mesh than this. So I always go to zero mesher. I'm gonna accept the defaults and just say zero mesh and give me a nice smooth, clean mesh. Now we could go half this resolution again um, or leave it as is, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this. But from here, I still have my, my brush selected. And ZBrush Curve Brushes will work with borders as well as with polygroups and with um, creased lines. So in this instance, all I have to do, because I have an open border, this is an open piece of, uh, piece of geometry here, all I have to do is click and drag. And as I approach the end of uh, the side of this, I just have to hold down Shift and it will automatically add that curve all the way around my brush all the way around my object rather. So you can see that while that worked, it's facing the wrong direction. I want uh, it to be facing the opposite way. So this is why I've chosen a left and a right. If we click this and change it to the other direction, it will now go to left and be facing the right direction. Now see, it's not quite sitting where I'd like it to sit. I want the edge of my leather to be sitting in here. So in here we can change the depth and we can just bring that right back down and click on the curve once again, and it will sit that further down. So the further down we go with this depth, the further down it will sit that inside that. When you're done, you just click on your object. That will uh, basically remove the curve. If you want to change the size of that, just undo that. Change the size of your brush while you're not hovering over it. You don't want your cursor to be blue when you're doing this, you want it to be red. And then the next time you click, you'll get much larger pieces on this. So you can change the depth again if you need to. Uh, or I'll just tap on your object when you're done, go to dynamic and turn on dynamic mode to see your final results. So from here, you can keep on sculpting. Uh, you're basically done. If you want to see the inside of this, we can go down here to display properties and turn on double sided. So we see what this looks like. If you do want to actually have thickness to this, that's easily done as well. We do have two separate objects now. Uh, one of them is masked and one of them is unmasked. Um, just by virtue of the way we, we made this. So we can just go down to split and say split unmasked points. And that will separate this object out from our newly created curves. So with our separated object out, we can go to our Z modeler tool, BZM, hover over polygon and choose Q mesh. And instead of just doing a single polygon, we'll say all polygons. And that will allow us to give this some depth. We can basically just push that out to whatever depth we want. Let's turn on our leather trim so we can see, make sure we don't go too far. This looks about right. So from here, you can sculpt away and start adding leather textures. If you're creating your own brush rather than using the one I have, don't forget to save it. So press B and your brush will be listed here in the latest brushes that you've used. Just make sure it's the currently selected one and then go to brush, save as, and save it somewhere on your hard drive. One final thing to remember with brushes is when you do save it, you can actually edit the brush credit. So you can put in your name. If you decide to share this brush other, later, other people will see that. And you can enter your maybe your favorite YouTube tutorial website even if you want to uh, and hit OK and then choose brush, save as, and maybe overwrite an existing one if that's what you want to do. All right, thanks for watching and hopefully this helps out somebody. And if you have any comments um, or issues with the brush, it's for 2021.5. So it may not work in previous versions of ZBrush. I can't guarantee that. So do let me know if you have a problem with it. As usual, I provided this brush for free on my Gumroad. So download it, have a play with it, see what you think. If you have any comments, let me know. Uh, but basically, hopefully this helps somebody out understanding the brushes and maybe even on creating some leather objects that they might want. Don't forget to subscribe. All right, bye.